four, three, dos, uno, cero, cero, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco, cuatro, tres, dos, uno, cero. Uh, um, what's up? What's up, Inspired Life, Mary? Both. What's up? What's up? We call it Inspired the Mary People. Oh, what's up? What's up? Que pasa? Que pasa? Que pasa? Hey, hey. Seven. Seven strategies to reconnect your marriage. Stick around. weeks ago, it probably got just that something had just come from out of nowhere. However, now I knew that it didn't, that it came from the Holy Spirit. So this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. There are people. What did you say? Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> you already know that there are people who are married, but they're not happy in their marriage. And so for us, when we get a download from the Holy Spirit, when we want to, we we want to study it, right? Not just oh, the Holy Spirit see, but there has to be a study on it. Like how how we want to deal with what God has confronted us with, confronted us about. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to say a light uh, a note about that. I I noticed. I want to tell you something. Have you ever been before I L M? Inspired Life Ministry. You've been sitting online with us, and then Pastor Shelley and I start ministry. The word on any subject, just think, and you start to think: Are they a fly on my wall? Did I talk to them? Did I actually tell Pastor Shelley something, and I forgot I said something to her? How did they know exactly what I was going? What? 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 What is it? How did they know? Or you're listening to something and it doesn't apply, right? You're listening and you're being kind to us by watching anyway. This right before you get totally bored, we say something that's directly for you. Has that ever happened to you? Let me tell you what was going on. At the time in which we're speaking this, we may or may not be live. But what is live is the Holy Ghost. Well, come on. See, what happens is when we are inspired, have it, having inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I mean, yeah. think about it. The name of our ministry is what? I know we say ILM, but what does ILM stand for? Inspired Life Ministries. So literally, we are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yeah to speak on the topics that we're speaking on and yet they're fitly joined together to your spirit at the right time when you need it the most that's important so when pastor just said two weeks ago when she felt the holy spirit come upon her and explain to her what that people weren't what happy in happy their marriages. in their marriages right yeah. We don't know specifically, this message is not for someone specifically that we had a conversation with, right. but the Holy Spirit knows all things. Yeah. So at the time that we're talking about something else, Hallelujah. the Holy Spirit is knowledgeable that you just finished with an argument with your spouse. You just finished feeling unloved with your spouse. He understood the distance that was starting to be processed between the two of you all, the Holy Spirit did. So two weeks ago, the Holy Spirit said, this is what I want you to work on. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When we speak the word of God, 
you have to remember first, first, we had to live it. First, we had to experience it. First, we had to question ourselves to see if we fit the bill before we bring it to you as a couple. Make sense? Yeah. That way we don't be, we're not hypocritical, right? Or as the gospel calls it in the Bible, become a castaway, a hypocrite, right? So we have to ask ourselves, is our marriage happy? Right. You follow what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And so this is not an easy task. The things that we're ministering to you as a couple, because first we had to become partaker yeah. of what the Holy Spirit yeah. is telling us to give to you. So watch this. At the same time, the Holy Spirit is working on your situation. He's modifying my situation, yes. using me as the first prerequisite, yeah. using her as the first prerequisite. Interesting, isn't it? So sometimes we discover things about our marriage that are there or help that we need that's there when we're trying to help you. Right. Amazing. Yeah. So all we're doing is listening to the downloads of the Holy Spirit, and then we're operating in that, right? Yeah. And he gives the answers that we, all of us need. Right. So I just wanted you to keep that in mind as we begin to unfold these seven strategies to reconnect your marriage. Just keep in mind, the Holy Spirit told us to do this. Yeah. These things are governed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So if the Holy Spirit was kind enough loving enough as God, right? Gentle enough to specifically craft a message for you. Wouldn't it behoove you to pay attention? Wouldn't it behoove you to take notes? And wouldn't it behoove you to execute the strategy? Amen? Amen. So strategy number one, Pastor, mm -hmm. to the married couple. Amen, amen. I, oh. The first one is commitment. I, I studied, I hesitated a little bit. I'm like, okay, should we plug in the marriage definition or should we just go right here? That's a good time to do it. Let's do it now. Okay. Marriage is what? A divine institution. Created by who? God. God. We're by how many? Two. Two. Rational. Free moral ages. Male and female chooses to enter into a covenant relationship with an almighty God to stay submitted and committed, committed to an imperfect person. Wow. Hmm. That's important. Very. That's important because a relationship is a two-part covenant or a two-part interaction. Yeah. A relationship is two people who have to interact in that. Yeah. Both should be thinking that they're making a commitment to God yeah. to stick around, to stay, to stay in a relationship with an imperfect person. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the strategies that we're gonna share, we're not gonna go over all seven tonight. I would encourage you to take notes, write down these scriptures, go back in 2 Timothy 2, 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So for married couples who are not happy, right, there are biblical lesson principles that can provide us with the guidance and the support that we need to help restore happiness and harmony in our marriages. Why? Because we want to have marriages that glorify God. And so the first one that we're going to discuss, and probably just this one this evening, is commitment. Commitment. Now, when we look at commitment, the Bible teaches the importance of commitment in a marriage. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, which is the Old Testament, it is stated for the man who does not love his wife, but divorces her, says the Lord, the God of Israel, covers his garment with a violence, says the Lord of hosts. So guard yourselves in your spirit and do not be faithless. So when we look at this particular verse, it emphasizes the need for commitment and faithfulness in marriage, even during difficult 
times, you know, those times when we're not speaking to each other, which we should keep communication open, effective communication. This verse, it does what? It addresses the issues of divorce, the issue of divorce, and the importance of love and faithfulness within a marriage. Love and faithfulness within a marriage, they are related. They intertwine with one another. Amen. That in loving a person, there needs to be faithful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So when you and I mess up, when you and I mess up, right? God re- continues to remain faithful to us even in our mess ups. And he continues to love us unconditionally in our mess, in our But isn't it different oftentimes, not with all, but with many marriages, when there's a mess up, a hiccup, somebody sinned against the other person, somebody sinned against um, their marriage, the covenant vow that they made first to an almighty God. And then to that spouse, isn't it interesting how we won, we won't forgive. And then because something happened, we feel like it gives us a right or an opportunity to also become unfaithful. Well, that's a lie from the pits of hell. It's a lie. You want to say something, Pastor? Okay. So here it is. This particular verse, it conveys a message that divorce should not be taken lightly. And it also emphasizes the significance of maintaining love and faithfulness in a marital relationship. And so who is the perfect example? It is God himself. He remained in fellowship with us because he has a relationship because we accepted his son, Jesus Christ. So when we sin against him, and yes, I'm being redundant, he doesn't cut that's awful. Well, let me say, he doesn't stop loving us. Mm. He hates the sin, but he continues to love us. God hates sin, but he continues to love us. But this verse also serves as a reminder of the commitment and the responsibility that marriage entails. Do you know in order to be married, yeah, y'all know because you're married, that it re- it's a responsibility. And as we are called mm. to guard our spirit and to prioritize faithfulness in marriage we must be faithful it doesn't give you and I a right that if our spouse mess up mm. for us to go out and do something to satisfy our flesh we can keep it real if there's infidelity that's taking place of course that's going to make you unhappy in your marriage it doesn't mean for you to go out to commit adultery. It does not give you a right to do it. There have been many marriages where infidelity has taken place and the spouse learns about it, but they have learned to work through it. But you can't just work through it on your own. It's gonna require forgiveness. It's gonna require the vows that you made to God it's work and trust has to be rebuilt and I'm just using infidelity as an example yeah. it could be a whole host of other things it could be that you are part of a blended family and you're not the biological parent and this can be issues or concerns that come up that can create havoc in your marriage and cause you not to be happy but no matter what comes we must remain faithful in our marriage and we have to learn to control my daddy calling everything in our mouth called the tongue because once we spill it out we can't take it back and so let's do what be slow to speak quick to listen and slow to anger but just wanted to share that one strategy with us and that is commitment 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 got to start powerful to commit to each other to commit to God to commit to yourself to endure a relationship that you feel is dead 
a relationship that you feel should not be resurrected? How about you tried and it could not be resurrected? Hey, listen, I'm not here to judge your situation. I am here to enhance your situation, to tell you that Jesus can heal the brokenness in your life and in your marriage. Jesus can heal it. He can seal it. My, my, my. He can heal your relationship and he can seal yeah, yeah, your yeah, relationship. Why would he say that what God put together, let no man put asunder if he no. didn't want it to be sealed? If he didn't want it to be permanent, if he didn't want it to be fulfilling for you, if he didn't want it to be lifelong, no, he wanted it to be lifelong. He didn't want you to get divorced over anything particular as it relates to you being a human being. No, he allowed the blessing of your union so that you can unionize together so that you can procreate in a fashion where his will gets duplicated in the earth. That's what he wanted from your relationship. That's what he wanted from your marriage for other couples to see because the influence that you had over them, right? And then you go about doing what God called you to do and then they see you and then they're encouraged to go do what God called them to do and they teach their children that and so on and so on. Building strong families. See, a family is a husband and a wife. Yes. The children are first, secondary. That's right. But first is a husband and a wife. Yeah. And so God wanted your family, your husband and the wife, to be super committed to him yeah. in covenant, to stay in a relationship with a person that wasn't perfect. So when their imperfection starts to show, you would decide to stay. Yeah. Why? Because you are committed to Christ, yeah. to stay committed and submitted to an imperfect person, to be stay committed and submitted to a submitted relationship mm -hmm. with. That's right. An imperfect person. Yes. So be encouraged this evening and understand that God wants you first to be committed. Mm -hmm. And who is that commitment to? Tonight I'm talking about to God. That's right. Restore your commitment to God right now yes. where you sit. Say to yourself, it is time for me to get committed to an almighty God Hallelujah. so I can be committed and submitted in my relationship with my spouse. Amen. 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 If you want to be encouraged, I hope that you have been. If you want to renew your commitment, let's do it right now. Repeat this prayer after me if you were encouraged. Lord, Lord, I commit to you. I commit to you to stay, to stay in relationship, in relationship, in covenant, in covenant with you, with you to, stay to stay submitted, submitted and, committed and committed within relationship, within relationship of, my spouse, of my spouse. That is imperfect. That is imperfect. You called me. You called me. You gave me an assignment. You gave me an assignment. And along, and along in that side of. In that side of Along inside of right along inside of that commitment, that commitment was my spouse. Was my spouse. You allowed me, allowed me to make a commitment to, to you. Make a commitment to you to be with my spouse. With my spouse. And, and it's hard. And it's hard. Strengthen me. Strengthen me by your spirit. By your spirit. That I might be. That I might be consistently, consistently committed, committed and in a submitted, in a submitted relationship, relationship with this spouse with this that you gave me bless us make us a blessing make us i accept you as my lord and my savior in jesus name jesus name amen amen and amen amen remember love and faithfulness in your marriage peace blessings and remember we love you, but more importantly, God loves you. He loves you. We'll see you soon.